All right, we are hopping in right now. We are with mystery girl number one, <laughs> mystery girl number two. What is your name, mystery girl number one? Martina. Martina, and what is your name? Angela Choi. Angela Choi. Wow, we're Chiyo getting fancy name. with the surnames. I'm gonna stay incognito. <laughs> incognito, <laughs> no one's gonna know who you are. <laughs> okay, and the reason why I wanted to make this video is just to get the perspective of stuttering from two people who have never stuttered in their life. I mean, a lot of people, when I, when I tell them that I have a stutter, they'll tell me like, when I was younger, I used to stutter. Did, did you guys ever think that? When, when, I, when I told you that I had a stutter, did, did you ever think like, oh, I s actually do stutter sometimes? Um, so before when you were introducing us and you said, oh, I'm here with two people who have never stuttered before, I was like, oh, that's actually not true because I think that everyone at some point in their lives have stuttered, like especially when you're in situations that make you nervous. I think that I can't say definitively, definitively that I've never stuttered before. So I didn't think that I stuttered as a kid, but there are moments where I've stuttered. I mean, even when I was saying the word definitively, I stuttered. Mm. Okay. Okay. I see. And what's what's your take on that? I guess there is nobody in this world who pronounced all of their words in their life correctly, except for a baby that maybe just said one word. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but the point is maybe that I never perceived it as stuttering because I never perceived it as a problem. Maybe just simply because it wasn't often enough, or maybe because I didn't feel like it's something that makes my speech seem strange or in, that there is any negative connotation so I never thought about it like that but I'm sure like that I stuttered yeah. some few times in my life or maybe even more but I just didn't perceive it because I didn't think that it was important because I didn't see it as something that defines me or says anything about my identity or my intelligence or something like that 100% and I like like I said I I <laughs> often often get people say like i stutter a lot i'm not going to dive into i mean i stutter sometimes as well for people that don't have a stutter um without diving too much in depth into that it's a com it's a different feeling of being a person who stutters and just stuttering sometimes there's there's like i believe everything in life is on a spectrum and some people have severe stutters and some people have very mild stutters but I still feel like the very mild stutterer who says they have a stutter is different from someone who just stutters yeah. sometimes I agree with you so I just wanted to clarify what I was saying before so I'm definitely not identifying as a stutterer but in that moment when I was speaking with you, yeah. I had a stuttering moment. So I do agree with you that it is a spectrum and I don't identify as someone who has the tendency to stutter. But what I'm saying is that I think every person at some point in their lives has experienced stuttering moments. 100%, 100%, awesome. And what was your guys' first take on my stutter did you notice it first before i told told you or did i tell you first and then you noticed it i absolutely did not notice it and i told you like uh maybe even if you did stutter it's possible but i actually didn't notice it as a stutter because it was just not frequent enough or as severe enough for me to notice it so i cannot say if you did stutter or did not but i did not perceive anything strange about the way you speak mm, okay and how about you did you notice it before I told you or after no after so uh, when we first met I think you had told me that you were a stuttering coach and I was like oh uh, I didn't notice that you stuttered until you were describing what you were doing and that one point I heard you stutter once but it wasn't something I picked up on when I first met you okay do you believe, do you think that... Okay, so this is gonna sound like I want you to say a certain answer, but I do not. Okay. Like, I, I want you guys to be as truthful as possible. Okay. If I walked up to you guys and I introduced myself okay. and I got caught in a heavy, heavy block, like, hi, my name's Ch -ch 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 
<laughs> Chase. What would have that made you feel? Um, feel. It honestly, it wouldn't make me feel uncomfortable because I know that probably you feel uncomfortable. But if I notice that you don't feel uncomfortable about it, then I would not think about it too much, maybe. Okay. So I would mirror the way that you feel about this. And I would just like, kind of statistically suppose that you don't feel comfortable about this. And would that be in the way, that, would that feeling of me not being comfortable, would that be because I stuttered? Or would that be my reaction and the vibe I was giving with the stutter? I guess, I guess both. Like maybe if you started stuttering and you started like laughing at it, then I would like that would make me release my tension as well. Yeah. But otherwise, I think I would feel uncomfortable like because of both of the things because I would expect you to feel uncomfortable and if you would feel uncomfortable. But like if you would show me clearly that you don't feel uncomfortable or like make a joke out of it, then I wouldn't feel uncomfortable. Okay. I see. What about you? Yeah, um, I think that for me, what would be important for me is to see where the conversation is going. So in the sense that like, okay, you're introducing yourself and I noticed the stutter, but what's more important for me is to see where the conversation is going, right? So like, um, if we're having a normal conversation and it's because, and you're stuttering, then it's fine. Like, I'm just gonna have a conversation with you. But if you're stuttering and it's like you, don't know what to say to me like if it's more than stuttering let's say like someone is socially awkward then I would know okay that's like the limits to our interaction and so like let's just keep it as something like cordial simple versus like if you're stuttering and we still engage in like a deep conversation then um, then I would take that differently so I think ultimately what I'm trying to say is that like the nature of the conversation is more important to me and like I would need time to suss that out versus just making an initial impression of you based on you stuttering when saying your name. Oh, uh, okay. That's dope. That's dope. That's deep. And um, what was the first time you noticed I stuttered? Or what What was the first time where maybe not just a little stutter, but there was like, that was a stutter. Was there a time like that? And what What time was that? Uh, like, I don't actually remember exactly, but it was definitely after you mentioned that you stutter, I started paying attention to it. Okay. But I don't remember like a specific moment. Okay. Was there a, sp a specific moment for you where it was like, whoa, that was a stutter? And I was like, whoa, there. Yeah, so just reiterating what I said before, I didn't know that you stuttered until you told me that you were a stuttering coach. And then at some point after that, um, I don't remember what you were saying, but I just noticed that you were saying a word and it took you, I think, like three tries to get the entire word out. And that's when I was like, oh, like that's what he meant. But I wouldn't have pick that up until what happened okay yeah. dope we've had some pretty deep talks about stuttering i would definitely not classify you guys as stuttering coaches by now but <laughs> i feel like you guys know a thing or two what based off the knowledge you know what would you recommend to someone who if like let's let's say it was just you here and you heard someone stutter you heard someone stuttering and basically there's a sign on their back that said like please help me if i stutter please help me feel good if i stutter please help me feel like i belong if i stutter you you heard him stutter you see the sign on his back what would you go walk up and tell him let's start here first yeah um I mean, I think that it's really important to um, ensure that people feel safe. I think that's like the most important thing. When people feel safe around your company, then they're willing to open up and be themselves. So I think that's what's most important. And so I'd probably, um, to the extent possible, like indicate that like, you know, feel free to share whatever it is that you want to share with me in whatever capacity you want to share with me. Like I'm here to listen to you and like don't, you know, feel that you have the time and space to communicate as you wish and I'm just here to listen to reiterate that they don't you know need to feel like they need to rush themselves or get their point across and that they're in a safe space that's that's a, that's awesome that's fucking awesome all right 
I, what's your take on that? I would say something similar to what Angela said before that the essence of what the person is saying is more important than the form of how they are saying it and also what you teach in your course that it's really important to face your deeper fears because stuttering is just a symptom of you being afraid of what other people think and realistically speaking first of all people don't think about us that much very often we are very egocentric and second of all people don't have such negative thoughts about us like we think we're often the most critical person to us is us ourselves yeah 100 percent and one thing that i love about you both of you guys is res responses is that i said like what would you go up and tell him to make to make him feel good is like I don't even know if you guys would know what to do to make someone more fluent, but you you guys, like, the first thought wasn't like, all right, I'm gonna help him try to speak more fluently. It was, I'm gonna make him feel safe, make him feel like he belongs. And really, as a byproduct of that, we do become a lot more fluent. So let's do one last question. And one last question is for the guys out there. No, it's for the girls too. But I know a lot of guys feel like they cannot attract girls or they cannot pick up girls because they have a stutter. Let's say, is there a certain severity that you would cut out? Like if someone walked up to you and like int and introduced themselves and it was clear that um, they wanted to get to know you would there be something in your mind saying his stutter is too severe? I would not picture him being my boyfriend. Like, is there a certain level? Or is it not with the speech? Is it with something else? Or what's, what's coming to your mind? Yeah, um, so I've never been asked this question before and um, it's a very hypothetical question for me because I've also never been in that situation before. I think that like one of the first things that pop up um, in my mind is, uh, the willingness to overcome the stutter. I think that's more important than if a person is stuttering. Um, because for me, I know that one of my personal values is growth, right? Personal growth. And so I value that in another individual. So if um, a guy is working on um, overcoming his stutter, that's more important to me than whether or not he is stuttering. Um, yeah, that's my first, first take. I think that, um, from like a communication standpoint, I do, again, it's like the nature of the conversation. If I felt like the stuttering like hindered the types of conversations that we could have and like the depth of the conversations, that would impact um, mm. how I view the stutter, yeah. Yeah, and do you feel like the severity of the stutter would hinder the impact of the conversations or do you feel like it's something deeper that would actually be the thing that hindered it? I think that the thing that hinders it, it's prop. I think it's related to what I first mentioned, which is like the willingness, and the willingness, and the desire to change. Yeah, to work on the stutter. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great answer, Mar <laughs> Martina. So, Wait, let me re-ask the question. Yeah. Is there a certain level of severity of stuttering that you would? immediately block someone off from saying oh he's not dating material or would you generally what's your thoughts on dating someone that has a study i personally don't view it as a problem at all and i know it's the answer you want to hear but it's actually an honest answer because there is so few people in this world who are who have the qualities that we want to, for, to be, for example, our partner. And then if the problem is the stuttering, it's not a problem because it's such a small, small thing if you consider that it's a person that has the qualities that you are attracted to. So it represents like zero. In, in my criteria of like choosing somebody, absolutely zero. It's like, oh, you have a wrong haircut. Yeah, that level pretty much. Mm. Um, and then I forgot what was the same second thing. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll remember with time. 
let's let's go into the second question um additional to that you said there's certain criteria criteria that like means a lot more to you yeah in dating someone yeah what is that criteria like for someone that has a stutter what is something that they feel like me what is something that means a lot more as a potential match than the stutter itself wow that's a <laughs> okay um we're literally talking about my criteria now right yeah okay this goes like whether you're stuttering or not stuttering for me personally it's super important that the person is intelligent good looking empathetic has good social intelligence is like motivated and career oriented i would never think about whether the person has like a stutter mm. as something being important because like i said it's just like the the outside sort of shell and what is really really important is what the person is actually saying and thinking like the that the thoughts that you have are interesting and not whether you stutter when you say something super intelligent like i don't care that you stuttered i'm i'm hyper focused on the thing that you're saying on the thought on the idea and not on the way that you that it looked yeah or sounded in the end yeah and what's what's your humanly criteria when trying to when when connecting with someone yeah on a romantic dating See. Uh, level yeah um, very similar to Martina uh, first and foremost I'm looking for a guy who has a good heart like someone who is a decent human being I think that's one of the first things and then um, following that someone who is just curious about the world uh, someone who is uh, passionate about something has some sort of interest or something that he's pursuing um, and then I also prefer guys who are funny, witty, um, emotional intelligence is really important. Uh, someone who's emotionally mature, uh, is in touch with his feelings, can handle his feelings, can talk about his feelings. And then what she mentioned as well, uh, social intelligence. So a man who can hold his own in different social contexts, I think is really important for me. Yeah. And I feel like everything you guys said right now is something that a lot of people who stutter also lack is what you said the ability to handle yourself in social interactions the ability to share your emotions be vulnerable and that's the shit that it's it's crazy but once we develop that side of ourselves where we will feel safe it doesn't matter what environment we're in it doesn't matter if we're going to stutter a lot in that environment if we feel safe and we can express our emotions and we can be vulnerable that means so much more to put to put to potential mates mates <laughs> and it like once you work on that the stutter no longer becomes a problem the stutter is only a problem it only hurts you when you feel like it's it's limiting your ability to show up but once you say no i'm going to show up regardless and you just stutter on top of that there's no pain there's, exactly. there's no pain that's a good point yeah all right well thank you guys so much is there any last things on your on your guys's brain that you wanted to add i think um a lot of problems that we have in our life when we try to go and solve them we also solve a lot of other things together with that thing that we are solving so for example addressing the problem of your stutter but going deep 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 will address so many other things in your life that other people you know don't really tackle with just because they feel like oh i don't have a problem that other people can see as a problem although they feel the problem inside but just because the stutter expresses itself as something very obvious the person has an opportunity to work on it and there's a lot of people who are fucking scared the same way, the same intensity, like people who stutter. Yeah. But they never address the problem and they just keep on living with the fear. Yeah. So a problem can sometimes be actually good if you're able to solve it. 100%. 100%. Did you have any last thoughts? Yeah, um, just building off of what you were talking about before about vulnerability, I think that vulnerability enables 
deep connections because um, when you're able to have vulnerable conversations with other people, you are essentially providing people um, the opportunity and space to share something that is really important to them that you otherwise wouldn't talk about in surface level conversations. And that's when you realize that inherently we may have different challenges in our lives. We may be going through different things, but at our very core, we're the same. Like we are looking for love. Like we have ambitions. There are things that we want to do with our lives. And like when you're vulnerable, you allow for deeper conversations and connections to take place. And I think that's really important especially because we live in a world where social media is rampant but like what you see on social media is not what people are living day to day and it's having these vulnerable conversations that really allow you to get to know someone at their deeper core core yeah well and said i always just want to add to what you say something that i rem thought about two days ago is that what do you said that vulnerability is really good to build relationships but for me specifically good to build intimacy with another person and then intimacy is a perfect way to build a relationship after that so just like being fake and talking about cool things and superficial things does not build intimacy you think that you look good but the other person doesn't feel good with you when you're saying that because you are not touching into anything emotional. When you touch into emotional things is when you build intimacy and when you build intimacy you're really building the relationship and the connection with another person. One thousand percent. <laughs> One thousand percent. And that's what it's all about is becoming the most vulnerable, authentic version of yourself that isn't afraid to express yourself even when you feel anxious, even when you feel scared. You have an inner uh, inner knowing that you're going to be completely completely safe and once you're in that spot and you feel completely safe and you're not being inhibited to talk to certain people to talk about certain subjects or to talk about what's really going on inside of you you will be not only will you stutter significantly less but the pain like i said of stuttering is only there when you are with withholding yourself when there's still a chunk of you being held back but when you're fully you you're fully expressing yourself and then on top of that you just stutter sometimes there is no pain there's no pain and that's when you have fully overcome your stutter because if there's no pain and it's not holding you back you're not going to be thinking about it you're not going to be anticipating the situations there's no there's not going to be doubts in your brain saying don't stutter now because inner you will you will feel safe to express yourself however you want those thoughts those horrible horrible thoughts that are always always infiltrating our mind and making us think about our, stu our stutter 24 7 is only when we have a negative relationship with it the stutter by itself is just neutral it's what we make of it so if you right now while watching this want to overcome your stutter the authentic way not with speech tech not with speech techniques not with ear devices not by addressing any symptom but, but by becoming the most authentic vulnerable version of yourself that can feel safe to express himself whatever environment he is in he or she then click the closest link down below in the description and you could book your free one-on-one -on -one consultation call with me and we can hop on a call and chat and see if we would be a good fit to work together. But besides that, thank you, Martina. And thank you, Angela. That was a great, a great video. And thank you be, for being so vulnerable and authentic. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Ciao.